In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a no-tan collage that's balanced asymmetrically. First off, I need to take my paper and cut it into a 6 by 6 inch square. Now, in order to do that, you can use a regular pencil because a regular pencil is uh, graphite and it's got a little bit of a uh, sheen to it. You'll be able to see it. For the purposes of this video, I thought I'd use a white pencil so you can see it easier. First off, you've got to line up your ruler with the edge of the paper, unless your ruler starts a little bit in from the edge. Some of them do, so look at that carefully. Figure out where zero is. And then I'm going to make a mark at six. Whenever you make, a, you want to draw a straight line, you need to make two marks. So there's one, there's two. Then I'm going to take my pencil, and when you draw a straight line with a ruler, you hold the ruler, I uh, position it first so that you can see those two little dots that you made, holding it steady with your non-dominant hand, and then you take your, of course you take the hand that you write with, and you very quickly and very lightly uh, drag it just along the side of the ruler while holding it firmly with your other hand. Now I want it to be a 6 by 6 inch square, uh, a little bit of tongue twister, so I made another mark at 6, and down here. I have a long ruler, because so I make big paintings and I need long rulers, but your, your rulers are, are, should be like 18 inches, so a little easier to work with. So that's six inches there, and then, whoa, I'm going to draw that line there, right like that. Okay, so next thing is you're going to cut it out, and you know, how long has it been since you used the scissors? There's, we spend so much of our time on the screen now that, yeah, you may not be really used to using the scissors, but just line the blade up even with your line that you're cutting and just cut a straight line like that. Now the next thing we are going to do while we have the rulers out is after I have my design made here, I want to be able to glue it right smack in the middle of this paper. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to measure in, I believe it's four inches on each side. I'm going to check it, and it is. It's about four inches on each side. Now this paper is not like 100% exactly 14 by 17, so for those of you who may be perfectionists, it's going to be a little bit off. So now this way, it's going to be five and a half inches. So five and a half and five and a half ish. Like I said, the paper's not totally right. Now because of that, here's what I do. So I'm going to measure from the top down. So that's four inches, making a mark, and four inches, make mark, and I'm going to very lightly pull that line across. You really don't want that line to see after you're finished. Okay, and I'm not going to need it to go all the way, so I'm just going to do it like that. Now, I want to come over, now that I have that line, I'm going to start on this edge here. So I'm starting on the top and on the left. I'm going to measure over five and a half. Okay, and here, I'm going to measure over here, five and a half. And then I'm going to pull that line this way. Now, how long do I need to make that line? I hear you, you guessed it, six inches, right? So I'm going to put a mark of six inches, pull that line down to six inches. Now, I need to, this square to be six inches here, so I'm going to measure and put a mark right here, six inches right there. Okay, and six inches coming across. Remember, got to make two marks. If you want to get this centered, and we do, we do definitely want to get it centered. So I'm making those marks right there, pulling that across. Okay, now, this should go right together like that. All right, so measuring's done, got the paper set up, we're good to go. Okay, so before you do your design, you may want to do a little bit of research on different types of shapes to use. Um, you might have favorite shapes that you would want to incorporate. Remember, you need to have unity, variety, 
you want to vary the size of your shapes and vary the types of shapes you use. So some of your shapes could be straight lined, geometric. Other shapes might be curvilinear, more organic. Uh, and you may want to kind of look around at some different shapes. You could review the presentation that I showed you. Look at them, some of those in inspirational pieces that I included. Now I have some favorite shapes right now. One of them are leaves from a fig tree. And they kind of go like this. But I don't really care if they look exactly like fig tree leaves, so I want them sort of abstract. It almost looks like a puzzle piece. And I'm going to use that motif. I'm going to repeat that in a couple other places. Now I also want to have some lines that are more uh, jagged. And I really love um, Native American pottery, especially from the uh, Pueblo. Uh, areas they use some really cool shapes. Uh, this kind of looks like a half moon to me. Maybe I'll incorporate a few of those shapes. Some could be wider, some could be thinner. Um, now, when you're drawing your shapes, one of the most important things to remember is that they have to start on an edge and end on an edge. You know, this also looks like kelp a little bit. Okay, got one in there. And as I'm drawing my shapes, what I'm thinking about is not just the shapes, but I'm also thinking about the negative spaces between the shapes. Okay, all the black paper needs to be activated. Okay, all the black paper needs to be activated. So you don't want any part of the black paper to look like you didn't consider it. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do here. Maybe I'll come in like that and curve around like this. And remember, I've got to take it to the edge like that. And you know what? I guess that's okay. I'm not thrilled with that. And, you know, I may want to erase it a little bit, maybe change it a little bit. I'm using, like I said, I'm using a white charcoal pencil, or maybe I didn't say it. And, uh, but you can just use a graphite pencil. I just want to make sure it's showed up on the video. Maybe I take this and I kind of curve it around like that. And then I take this and I make that into like a slight S curve. Okay, fine. That's just fine. Okay. So that's going like this and it gives me a little variation. Now I think I need another one of those kelp things. Um, now, I haven't really varied my size so much, so I think I'm going to actually do that later. I'll show you. Okay, fine. That's ready to go. Now, I actually just like cutting it out with scissors. You may prefer using a X-Acto knife. And as I'm cutting, I'm getting the scissors just to cut right on the lines. And you can always erase your lines a little bit if you need to. Don't make, make sure you don't lose any of your uh, shapes. That would be very unfortunate. Okay, so now as I am cutting, what you can see that I'm doing is my scissors is staying in one place. And what I'm doing is I am using my non-dominant hand my left hand always likes to help whenever it can. So, uh, so I'm using my non-dominant hand to kind of move the paper. See how I get a curve like that? So I, I, like, I'm, I keep cutting, right? So I keep cutting and I'm turning the paper as I'm cutting so I get one really beautiful fluid line. Now there's a lot of ways that you like don't want to cut. And uh, I will, I'll show you how not to cut. See, this I got a really nice. So one thing you don't want to do is, I have to actually think about doing it. Yeah, you don't want to take your scissors and use choppy little marks and then hold the paper in one place and then try to move your hand around. So, <laughs> so yeah, that doesn't work. Okay, so again, you just keep your scissors, keep it in the same spot. That looks like a little abstract little, I don't know, fox with a really pointy nose right there. 
So whenever you're using you know, these kind of abstract shapes, uh, they'll probably re remind you of something. So I started with the idea of some fig leaves and some, uh, you know, sort of half, not half moon, but uh, crescent moon kind of shapes. And I could have incorporated some more geometric shapes, some more straight line shapes for more variation. I do have a lot of curvilinear lines. But I did vary it a little bit because the crescent moon shapes have points, right? But you may want to do yours with a lot more variation. Also, please keep in mind, I am doing this so you have a demo to watch. It's not going to take an hour, so it's going to go, you know, pretty fast. Uh, you may want to do yours, you know, a lot more intricately. You can also use images that are silhouettes of, uh, you know, more, much more complicated silhouettes of uh, real objects. I've had people incorporate buildings and figures and, uh, and all kinds of really beautiful shapes my students have used in these projects over the years. It's really exciting for me to see, you know, really what they come up with. So. As I would say, if you prefer to use an X-Acto knife to cut, just make sure that you're not cutting into your hand. So this hand that's holding the paper, always keep it like away from the direction you're cutting. Like you don't want to hold that hand right there. Okay. I actually can get a little bit more um, accurate, I find, with those scissors. Um, and I just kind of enjoy using uh, scissors to cut out the shapes. But if you're going to get in and make really, really super intricate shapes, and I have had some students that really get into this and make these designs really intricate, you're going to want to use the exact thing. Okay, now, everything's cut out. So, what I'm going to do next is I am going to glue this down in the center. And I'm going to glue it with the... Um, with the side with the chalk up. Okay. And I'm erasing some of those lines I see and might want to just wait until after I glue it down to erase those lines. So I would suggest gluing it on a, um, using your glue stick on a separate piece of paper so you don't get the glue all over your good white Bristol board that you're going to be gluing this down on. And any kind of scrap paper is fine. You don't have to use cardboard. I just had cardboard out because I was cutting on the cardboard. All right, so here we go. Almost ready to glue that down. And you can see I'm trying to get my hands not too full of glue. Also, whoa, I don't want to wrinkle. I don't want to wrinkle this cut out piece. And it's kind of delicate. All right. So I'm going to just start with this corner, putting that down there, and then get this corner here, and then there, I don't really have a corner, and then I'm going to just tap it down lightly, and like I said, I'm going to go back and erase some of those lines later. All right, now, this is the tricky part. So you're going to take these shapes that you cut out, and you're going to flip them over so they're the mirror image, and you're going to glue them on the outside. Okay. Now you know why you have to start cutting everything from an edge, okay? So when you do that, I always get a little bit um, confused about which side is which as I'm working. So I'm just going to put a little X on the back of the side that gets the glue, okay? <laughs> that's, that's my little trick, and it really helps me do this quickly and also do it accurately. Um, otherwise, you might end up with the wrong side. Okay, so that's correct. Sometimes I check it a couple times. Do that down like that. Okay, that goes right here. Now, if I wanted to get some more, like a more intricate image in one of these, uh, what I could do is go back into this and cut another shape out. Now, I could have drawn it first, but I had in mind that I would cut kind of a a little 
earthworm kind of shape out of there. Okay, so there it is. Uh, and so I cut that out, and so this should go like this, and then that is where I'm my, my right. That goes like that, that goes like that. Ooh, I reversed it. Gotta really watch that. Okay, so this, like that, and then that's the side that gets the glue. Okay. And you could cut out more shapes than I did. Like each one of these shapes could be the one that you cut out. So that goes like this. We spin it around like that. And it's got to be the mirror image. Okay, something like, yeah. Yes, something like that. A little worm shape through me. Okay, now this guy, he goes like that. There we go. And then he's going to be flipped like this. So that's the side that gets the glue. And side uh, here. There it goes right in like that. There. So that's one way, you know, if you go ahead and you uh, realize that as you're working on your collage that you maybe you didn't make your shapes, you didn't vary the size of your shapes enough, you can go back and cut out like some of the centers of your shapes. And uh, and I think that looks really cool. I would probably go to do it a lot more if I wasn't concerned about how long this was taking. Okay, so uh, you can see what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do to finish it up is this goes like that, or your corner can flip either way, or that can go like this. So that's going to be your choice, what you think looks better. Um, I'll, I'll just leave it like that for now. And this shape here, let's see how that goes. Sometimes it gets a little confusing. All right. Oh, it goes like that. So this one gets flipped this way. And then this will go, should have one hiding somewhere. This one gets flipped that way. Oh, there it is. Ha! <laughs> Hiding in plain sight. And then this guy here, he's going to get flipped like that. And obviously I would have glued all those down. So that would be my completed design. And after I'm done, and after these are glued down, the best eraser to use to uh, erase your marks is a kneaded eraser because it's very gentle and it also doesn't leave um, like erasure dust. So if you use a white vinyl eraser, I mean, they're fine too, but they just leave some little crumbs that you need to, you know, brush off. So, so there you have it. That's the asymmetrical, no tan, design.